Karens think they can do whatever they want and just get away with it. But sadly, these rude people get caught red-mouthed and drag themselves into trouble. Go now. This is the reason you have seen these people become the subject of ridiculous memes, and if it gets bad enough for them, they find themselves in jail. Join us as we take a look at the top 10 Karens reacting to a life sentence. Number 10, Penelope Soto. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the way a person looks. If this 18-year-old Karen had stood before you before you heard about this case, you wouldn't have believed in either the crime she was accused of or her behavior in the courtroom. And in case you have seen her video before, here's why she went viral. She had originally been arrested when police got a call about a woman who had fallen. When the police got to the scene, they saw Penelope standing next to a bike. She told the police that she was on Xanax and said she had more in her purse. During her arraignment, she appeared smiling and irreverent. You would think Penelope was standing before a comedian and she continued to laugh. The judge had originally placed her bond at $5,000 before he called her back after she left the court with a dismissive, adios. Though the judge laughed, he was annoyed by Penelope's act and hiked her bond to $1,000. You would think she was going to repent and feel sorry for what she did, but no, she again flipped the judge off and told him to F off. The judge knew only more punishment for more rude behavior would make Penelope come to her senses, so he added a sentence of 30 days in jail on contempt of court charges. And indeed, Penelope became sorry. She returned to the court to apologize to the judge and her family for her behavior. The judge was kind enough to vacate her sentence and reset her bond at $5,000, and if she completed her rehabilitation program, all charges would be dropped. Number 9, Amanda Stiles. If you thought Penelope's reaction and behavior were out of the line, then you haven't heard about Amanda Stiles, the Karen that took Karenism to a whole new level. Amanda and her husband found themselves in front of a presiding judge as they were embroiled in a custody hearing. Normally it shouldn't lead to anything serious, but the Karen in Amanda would eventually show itself again right in the middle of the hearing. By now, I shouldn't be telling you the frame Amanda Stiles belonged to. Yes, the only one with unruly behavior. Judging from how she was sitting to how she behaved, Amanda was seriously disrespectful to the court. She kept making unnecessary interruptions. The judge stepped in, urging her to wait her turn to speak, but she continued to be impolite. Amanda complained bitterly about not having enough time to acquire legal counsel and her attempts to reroute the procedure and obtain a court-appointed attorney aggravated the issues. She ignored the judge's warnings and continued with her disruptive behavior, trying to submit documents to the judge out of turn. When she was asked to take a drug test and pay for it, she vehemently objected to the motion and also refused to pay for it. And instead, she publicly admitted that she consumed an illegal substance saying it was legal in some areas. Her responses and behavior only continually damaged her appearance in court. So many times she objected to the judge, and also closed her screen at a point. She soon got out of control, and as the hearing went on, she failed to address the judge's inquiry, and even used profanity. One thing is, the judge was too patient with her. I can guess what's going on in your mind right now. The if I were the judge kind of thought, but let's move on. In the end, she'd lost the case as her behavior only proved that she can't create a secure and supportive home for her child. Number eight. Latasha Williams. While you might think of skin color when the slang Karen is used, it's safer to say it has to do with the way the bearer of the term acts. This is Latasha Williams, the woman who went too far. Williams was facing child endangerment and kidnapping charges following allegations she threatened two children in a Las Vegas apartment complex. It all started well as Williams was speaking calmly alongside her lawyer in front of Judge Jackie Glass at Clark County District Court. She was charged with two counts of first-degree kidnapping and two counts of child endangerment, and as soon as she was sentenced to jail time, all hell broke loose. She suddenly lashed out at a police officer as he tried to take her into custody and ended up on top of three cops trying to calm her down, injuring one of them. You can see how she tried to push off the officer that tried to take her to custody and how she thrashed around, kicked both legs, and lost her shoes, somehow ending up on top of the officers who were trying to take her away. The injured officer was off duty after the incident, 
as he ended up with a cut on his face and also got his knee injured so much that he received treatment for it at a local hospital. Williams believed and claimed she was accused wrongly and that she had three evaluations which should be enough to satisfy the court's arguments. Everyone in the gallery could only watch with amazement as Williams's behavior was unexpected. Number 7. Donna Kozal In this Karen's case, she was not the reason the court hearing was happening, but somehow her Karenism made her the subject of this hearing. Donna Kozal's daughter, Amanda Kozal, was the offender. Amanda drove under the influence and took the life of a 31-year-old man named Jerome Zyker, and several injured his fiancée, Brittany Johnson. It all happened after Jerome picked up Brittany from her 12-hour shift as a care worker at a group home. As they were driving home, Amanda slammed into them. Usually, the couple moves with their five kids, but fortunately, the kids were away at their grandmother's instead. Amanda then pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 3 to 15 years in prison. But instead of feeling sorry and sad, Donna was caught laughing when one of Jerome's family members was giving a statement. The judge then faced the Kozel family and showed her displeasure. Donna was initially thrown out of the courtroom, along with her unidentified boyfriend. But the judge was not satisfied with only throwing them out, so she ordered that the officers bring back Donna so she could properly punish her. Judge Lillard then sentenced her to 93 days behind bars for contempt in court. The judge also spoke about understanding how the Kozel family felt about their loved one going to jail. But the truth is, it was nobody's choice but hers. Amanda made that choice when she drove under the influence killing an innocent father of five in the process. The families of the victim could only feel so much pain watching the perpetrator's family laugh even after taking the life of their loved one. That was not funny. It was only shameful. It would only take one night in jail for Donna to realize that she had to be remorseful and tender a sincere apology. The next day, Donna returned to the court to face Judge Lillard and she gave a tearful apology. The judge was not having it as she hit back saying, Donna was eventually released after she came back to her senses and learned her lessons the hard way. Number 6. Melissa Hardwick You have heard about those who take their sentences silently and walk away and those who weep when they learn they would waste years behind bars. But this reaction, you won't see it coming. What took Melissa Hardwick to court was that her husband complained that she had engaged in domestic violence. But while Judge Jennifer Edwards was hearing the complaint, the hearing took an expected turn. Before things escalated, Melissa was already using profanity in court and interrupted the judge many times. The judge warned her repeatedly that she would be punished for contempt in court if she didn't stop. The judge handed Melissa a 10-day sentence, but instead of feeling sober or walking away... She did this. Yeah, you saw right. She attacked the judge by lunging across the bench. Fortunately, the securities were right on time to step in. Melissa was taken down by three security officers, and luckily, the judge was not hurt in the incident, but Melissa suffered facial scratches. The officers didn't expect that reaction, and even the judge was in shock. The court security officer, Adam Dodson, who helped to restrain Melissa, said he had only seen such an incident occur in training. Her behavior only showed that her husband was right. And instead of a 10-day sentence, she was sentenced to 120 days in jail for contempt of court for the incident. She faces charges of third-degree terroristic threatening, intimidating a participant in the legal process, and resisting arrest. The court also set her bond at $25,000 and the domestic violence order that Melissa's husband filed against her remained. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. This lady's case must be a serious one that she failed to realize in the beginning. Considering how she was laughing at first, she must have thought that her case was only going to cost her a fine or a few years of her life at worst. Also, the laughter would have made many people wonder if she was sane. But suddenly her emotions switched. Looking at the second frame, she must have realized that all of her years would be spent behind bars. That would, however, make anyone believe that she knew what she was doing when she laughed at first. What do you think this lady did? And what could probably switch up her emotions? Let us know in the comment section. Number 5. Darla Jackson In some cases, you can understand why some unfortunate events occurred. But in this case, you wonder why Darla Jackson did what she did and cried when she found herself in court. 
Though she appeared crying in court, she must have been smiling earlier on May 28, 2015. Jackson was driving her Nissan Altima when she noticed Buab, a motorcycle and dirt bike enthusiast and also a U.S. Navy Chief Petty Officer, riding his red Ducati motorcycle on northbound Interstate 5 near E Street in Chula Vista. As Buab moved into the fast lane, Jackson sped up and cut Buab off, maneuvering in front of him in the same lane. According to witnesses, Jackson veered onto the left shoulder of the freeway to do this. As Buab and Jackson interacted on the freeway, Buab kicked the passenger side door of Jackson's car and darted off. That infuriated Jackson who gave Boob a hit chase to get his license plate number. Jackson swerved on the freeway to hit Boob several times as each motorist sped up to one another. Jackson, who was driving at 95 miles per hour, ended up hitting him with her car. Buob was taken to the San Diego area hospital but would eventually die one hour after he was taken there. Darla Jackson pleaded guilty to killing Buob and was sentenced to six years in prison for the death of Zachary Buob. Although she was facing between three to 11 years in prison, the judge gave her a midterm, opting for six years behind bars. Jackson has already spent two years in jail for the crime, which will be counted toward her total sentence. Upon hearing her fate, Jackson could only cry, 033 to 039. But no matter how sad Jackson was, Buob's family's pain was immeasurable. Jackson could only cry as she heard those words and she was eventually given the chance to address the court. Number 4. Deborah Hunter, this Karen is just one of the craziest you'd ever see. In a viral video, Deborah Hunter got into an argument with an unknown person and took things too far. She was out shopping at the town center mall with her child when she started insulting a fellow shopper. It is not clear what caused the problem before the video started, but the video shows Deborah asking the shopper what she was going to do with the video, after which she threw her middle fingers at her. She then told the shopper that she would have to get closer to her and cough on her, which she did. This incident occurred at the time of COVID-19 pandemic, where everyone was asked to wear a mask or keep social distance. Deborah was not wearing a mask and she moved closer to the victim to cough on her. What made her case so serious was the fact that her victim was a cancer patient. Deborah was subsequently charged with misdemeanor assault. She faced up to 60 days in jail, and County Judge James Ruth appears inclined to sentence her to at least some jail time, having rejected prior settlement deals for probation only. Deborah was not sorry about what she did, but instead told the court why she assaulted the woman. She wrote, my daughter was alarmed when she noticed a stranger recording the three of us with her phone. Admittedly, I was immediately infuriated and demanded this customer stop filming my kids. In the heat of the moment, I overreacted in an overprotective manner, which ultimately led to my retaliation on this stranger, the victim. And that highly regrettable split-second knee-jerk reaction has cost my family dearly. A part of Deborah's letter states that she was not seeking mercy, but instead wants the court to know that her family was going through a lot because of the incident. According to her, she had been receiving text messages, phone calls, emails, and even hand-delivered letters of very bad content that directly attacked Deborah and her family. She also said the family underwent a series of traumatic events in the months prior, including a near-fatal boat accident and a house fire that destroyed their home and most of their belongings. However, Deborah expressed her regret after she was sentenced. Number 3. Lena Hernandez While we have Karens that cause trouble once in a while, we have some that go about causing trouble. Then 54 years old Lena Hernandez was filmed bullying people racially on two different occasions the same day. In one incident, she told a woman who was exercising in the park to go back to where she belonged. She also told the woman that nobody wants her there. Assuming that happened by chance, Hernandez wouldn't be caught in another act of bullying the same day. In another video, she spoke in a mock Asian accent, telling a man at the park to go home and calling him Chinaman. You would think that was all but no, these viral videos brought more incidents to light. A lady named Salminao spoke out on Twitter saying she had been assaulted by Hernandez at the Delamo Mall in Torrance in 2018, and police took no action after she filed her report. 
Salmanau said Hernandez started by verbally assaulting a custodian at the mall, and when she tried to intervene, Hernandez assaulted her and pushed her to the ground. She said Hernandez pulled her hair, held her head to the ground, and punched her multiple times in the back of the head. After Hernandez took a plea deal, Salminao urged the judge to reject the plea deal, saying she continues to endure psychological trauma from the attack. Hernandez eventually agreed to plead no contest to misdemeanor battery in exchange for a sentence of 47 days in county jail plus three years probation with anger management classes. She was also ordered to stay at least 100 yards away from the victim and the mall where the attack happened. There have been complaints about the sentence given to Hernandez with people saying the sentence is not enough for what she did and that it would only make others like her continue in the act. Well, what do you think? Number 2. Diana Lovejoy The story of Diana Lovejoy is a crazy one. It's a story like you have never heard before. Diana was previously happily married to Greg Mulvihill before their love story turned sour. The two lived together as husband and wife for seven years. However, their marriage was not a bed of roses as she suffered eight miscarriages before she finally gave birth to their son. Diana and Greg's relationship didn't last for too long as they filed for divorce at 2014. The divorce case took two years. At first, the court granted Diana full custody of their son, and Greg was only allowed to visit him for a few hours under supervision. For child support, Greg was asked to pay $100 per month, which he did, but in the summer of 2016, the court ruled that Greg and his wife should share custody of their son and the monthly payments for child support. At that time, Diana was earning $10,000 per month, and although she was allowed to keep their family house in Carlsbad, she was required to pay her ex-husband $120,000. But Diana didn't want to share custody with Greg, and so she conspired with her shooting instructor, McDavid, to kill Greg. She paid Greg the $120,000 settlement, but Greg didn't know she had other plans. On September 4, 2016, Greg received a call from someone who claimed that he was a private investigator. He told Greg that he could provide evidence showing that he was abusive, which could be used against him in the divorce case. The caller convinced him to go to a dirt path of Avenida Soledad, near Rancho Santa Fe, to collect the evidence. Greg went to the location, but he didn't go alone. He went in the company of his friend, Jason Kovach, but there was no evidence, only a death trap. On reaching the location, Greg was shot, but thankfully, he survived the near-fatal incident because the bullet missed his heart. After investigations, it was discovered that Diana partnered with McDavid to commit the crime. It emerged that she paid McDavid $2,000 so that he could commit the crime. However, she denied being involved in the conspiracy and claimed that she could never harm the father of her child. More evidence pointed to the fact that she has even inquired from her aunt on who could kill Greg. After Diana was arrested, she was found guilty of committing the crime and eventually sentenced to 26 years in prison. McDavid was also sentenced to 50 years in prison, and both of them were required to pay $500,000 each as damages. On hearing the sentence, number one, Kimberly Kessler. Even if we haven't agreed on anything since the start of this video, we should all agree that Kimberly Kessler deserves to take the number one spot on this list. Kimberly was convicted of killing her co-worker, Jolene Cummings, who was reported missing in May 2018. The motive of the killing is unknown, and no one knows where Kimberly hid the body. But one thing is sure, Kimberly is a dangerous person. It was difficult for the police to find out her true identity at first, as she has used multiple names across all states. But during her interview, she revealed her identity after 48 hours. She said her name is Kimberly Lee Kessler. She's 50 years old, and she's been on the run for over 25 years. Even though Kimberly was sentenced to life in prison, she doesn't seem sorry for what she had done. She seemed like someone with a mental issue, which has been a problem right from the start. But after initially declaring her mentally incompetent to go to trial, the judge later said Kessler was capable of understanding the case against her. She refused to participate in the trial, however, and created disruptions during her brief court appearances. She spent most of the trial in a separate room with a video link to the proceedings. At one point, emaciated from self-starvation, Kessler sat in an anti-suicide smock staring at the camera during a hearing and screamed an obscenity at the judge. 
According to jail officials, Kimberly regularly strips naked and spread feces on the window of her observation cell. But despite her outbursts and her perilous health condition with her weight dropping from 196 to 74, she was found mentally competent for trial and eventually sentenced to life in prison. There you have it for today. What do you think about Karens and their sentencing? And have you ever encountered one? Let's know in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.